and thank you for your interest in the Alternative Licensure Program, or ALP, at UCCS. My name is Beth Cutter, I'm the coordinator, and this presentation is intended to give you an overview and to answer some frequently asked questions. To explain what is meant by alternative licensure, we're a designated agency approved by the Colorado State Board of Education to provide a one-year program for candidates seeking their initial teacher license in one of the areas you see here. Alternative licensure does not include student teaching. A majority of the practical experience comes on the job. If you do not feel confident or competent to step into a classroom and assume the responsibilities of a full-time teacher, the ALP is not for you. There are more than 25 designated agencies for alternative licensure in Colorado, and the URL for CDE's searchable database of who they are and what they offer appears at the bottom. If you are looking into becoming licensed in another area, you will want to search this database and find another agency that can help you out. Make sure to set the type field to alternative. People choose UCCS first and foremost because of our excellent reputation. The National Association for Alternative Certification's Outstanding New Teacher for 2018 is from the ALP, and our candidates routinely receive strong ratings from their employers. However, people also choose it for reasons of personal convenience. It's possible to take almost all of the courses online if you wish, and because our program leads to a Master of Arts in Curriculum and Instruction. More about that in a moment. When I say that it's possible to take almost all the courses online, it's also possible to take almost half of them on campus if you prefer. Sometimes people who are just returning to higher education after several years off actually prefer to see their professors in person and interact with their classmates in real time. The first four courses in our program are offered in varying formats in alternating semesters. What I mean by that is that if a course is offered online in the fall, it is usually offered on campus in the spring or summer and vice versa. Not only does this give most candidates some flexibility, but it also serves the needs of our military veterans who can take better advantage of the GI Bill if they can attend some courses on campus. And once you actually obtain a teaching position and start working full time at a school, you'll appreciate that you can squeeze in your coursework whenever you have a minute. We have found that online courses help to minimize schedule conflicts with parent teacher conferences, staff meetings, coaching or club sponsorships, childcare, etc. In other words, real life. One advantage to the fact that our program leads to a master's degree is that it gives you a fairly straight shot at increased earnings. Many employer districts incentivize ongoing education by offering automatic salary increases when their teachers obtain an advanced degree. The last two courses that you'll need for your MA, Introduction to Research and Statistics, and then Research Project, will give you the background and skills not only to recognize quality educational research, but also to identify and pursue your own research interests relatively early in your career. As you will see on the upcoming slides, the licensure portion of our program consists of 10 graduate level courses. The first six of those we call the core. Although we are officially a one-year alternative licensure program, the one-year clock does not begin to tick until you start a full-time teaching position. When you do start that teaching position, there are four courses that you must take concurrently, two each semester, because being enrolled in 225 clock hours of educator prep instruction concurrent with that first year is written into state law. But you can complete the first six ahead of time. 
So when people ask, how long does the program take? The answer is, it depends. Here you see what we call the ideal scenario, which is five consecutive semesters starting in the fall at a rate of two courses per semester. We believe that two courses per semester allows you to pay maximum attention and derive maximum benefit from your coursework. By the way, two courses per semester is considered full time for graduate school. The courses you see in green are the core courses. Curriculum 14, 5014 and Curriculum 5016 are really also part of the core, but they're only offered in the summer semester, so you have to take them then. Ideally, you obtain a job after taking the first six courses. During your ALP year, which is your first year as a teacher, you take two courses in the fall and two courses in the spring, and that completes the licensure portion of the program. After that, you have just two more courses, indicated here in purple, and you have a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. All told, that is seven semesters, or a little over two years. However, we know that not everyone fits in that ideal scenario. Here on the right, you see one variation of the licensure program condensed into three semesters. We actually have had people find a job and then enter the licensure program, which means doubling up on coursework in order to complete the program within the required one year. We do not recommend this route as the first year of teaching is time consuming enough as it is, but people have done it. You will note that upon completion of the 10 licensure courses, it will still take another two semesters in order to complete the MA. And that's because LEAD 5700 is a prerequisite for Curriculum 5090. Curriculum 5090, the research project, is a capstone. And here is one more variation on the condensed scenario, and that is when a candidate gets a job, but for some reason is not able to get any core courses in them prior to teaching. The 12 month clock starts ticking in August, so you have to squeeze the last four courses in during the summer after your first year of teaching. We call this the insane route for a number of reasons. First, you're not taking curriculum 5014 and 5016, which are all about how to plan lessons and manage a classroom until after the fact. Second, you're leaving yourself no margin for error in terms of completing four courses during the summer. However, people have gone this route and of course come out with their license, so it can be done. Again, however, we don't recommend it. People do want to know how much the ALP will cost. Our advice is to use the bursar office's bill estimator at the web address listed here to calculate what it would cost for you. There are so many variables. How many credit hours are you taking per semester? Are you paying in-state or out-of-state tuition, etc.? that it's really only possible for us to cite ballpark figures. But as you can see here, the cost for the licensure program only would be roughly $18,000. If you press through to add your MA, that adds another $3,000. So your total cost for licensure plus MA, if you qualify for in-state tuition, will be approximately $21,000 altogether. Alternative licensure candidates find jobs all over the place. As I mentioned earlier, there are more than 25 designated agencies for alternative licensure throughout the state. In general, we serve the areas you see listed here. If you already know that you will be seeking a job more than 100 miles away from the heart of Colorado Springs, you might want to affiliate with a designated agency closer to your school. But do contact us at UCCS if you have questions. We'd be happy to help. Since the 2017-18 school year, we've been using an online video supervision program, and you'd be amazed at what can be done with video cameras this day. 
and it's possible that we can work with you regardless of where you find a job, as long as it's in Colorado. So, is the ALP at UCCS for you? The profile of a successful candidate starts with significant prior experience with youth. Ideally, that includes experience in school, perhaps as a substitute teacher or a paraprofessional. If not, you will need to adapt very quickly to the daily routines and rigors of teaching. As the saying goes, teaching is something you are, not something you do, and it takes enormous commitment and motivation. You will be doing graduate coursework at the same time, don't forget, and a majority of it will be online, so you will be, need to be good at digital communication. Your pathway to alternative licensure starts with your ability to obtain what is now called alternative license pending employment slash program status from the Colorado Department of Education. This is an online application process that you begin at the web address that you see here. You will first create what they call a lifetime account which you will actually return to again and again over the course of your career as an educator for your initial teacher license, for your professional teacher license, for any additional endorsements you may wish to add in the future, possibly for your principal license. Truly, this is a lifetime account. The CDE website will explain how to get your fingerprints done and submit them to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. You will also need to upload copies of all official transcripts. CDE will be looking for proof that you are highly qualified to teach in the area in which you seek licensure, either by having a degree or by having 24 credit hours in specific areas within that area, or by passing a state approved content test. The worksheet you see here at the left is a picture of the content evaluation worksheet that CDE will use if you seek alternative license pending employment status and subsequently a license in English language arts. A UCCS advisor can do a preliminary review of your transcript, but actual application evaluations and decisions are made by CDE staff in the Office of Educator Licensing. Here's a picture of the secondary, meaning grades 7 through 12, math worksheet. Actually, the ALP at UCCS has two pathways to licensure as a math teacher. In 2018, the State Board of Education approved an endorsement for middle school, which is grades 6 through 8 math as well. As you can see here, Demonstrating content competency to teach middle school math allows you some wiggle room in terms of the categories your math credits come from, and it requires a different praxis exam that has less calculus. Here's a picture of the science worksheet. Here's a picture of the social studies worksheet. And here's a picture of the worksheet for world languages, such as Spanish, French, German, or Chinese. If you already know that you are lacking certain courses and you would rather take coursework than a content test like the Praxis, you can certainly sign up for those courses at either UCCS or Pikes Peak Community College. There are a couple of online coursework providers as well. CCC Online, which stands for Colorado Community Colleges Online, or ColoradoIndependentStudy.org. Academic background will help you pass a test, of course, but it may also help you when you apply for a teaching position. If the vacancy is for a teacher of British literature, for example, Employers will be more inclined to hire someone with British literature on their transcript. Ultimately, however, that's up to you. As long as you have, an, have alternative license pending employment status and are affiliated with a designated agency for alternative licensure, 
school districts will be willing and allowed to hire you. The ALP at UCCS admits candidates year round. Our rule of thumb is to apply at least one month before the start of any given semester. The website for application is listed here. The ALP is a graduate program, a subplan of the MA in curriculum and instruction. We do not require the GRE in case you wondered, but we do require that you meet with an advisor prior to being admitted. If you live out of state or out of town, that can be by phone or on Skype. Please call the Student Resource Office at 719-255-4996 to schedule an appointment. Think of your alternative license pending employment slash program status as a job hunting license. UCCS does not help you find a job. You must do that on your own. Although we do send out a monthly newsletter to candidates who have been admitted to our program with tips for interviewing, notices of job fairs, and so forth. Cast a wide net in your job hunt. As you might imagine, school districts with a deep pool of applicants may not want to hire alternative licensure candidates who, by definition, are inexperienced. However, our ALP candidates do find it reasonably easy to find positions in smaller districts, rural areas, charter schools, and schools serving at-risk populations. One piece of advice, while you are online with CDE, apply for your substitute teacher authorization, which you can get with any college degree. Register with a variety of school districts and start to sub there. Not only will that help you get your name out there, but it will also help you decide where you might like to work. Colorado has 178 different school districts and they each have their own human resource departments. Learn how to find the jobs or careers or employment web pages of any districts where you might like to work, bookmark them, and return to them regularly to check for new postings. In order to work in terms of the L, any job that you find must be at least 51% in the area of your licensure. For example, if you have your alternative license pending employment status in English language arts, and you see a job that is 60% ELA and 40% theater, which is actually a separate endorsement, you could go for it. However, if the job was 60% theater and only 40% English language arts, you could not. You'll be competing with experienced teachers and also with graduates of teacher prep programs that include student teaching. So plan to be a competitive applicant. Develop an attractive error-free resume that highlights any experience or training that you've already had related to education. Develop the template for a cover letter and then customize it for each school where you apply. Google teacher interview questions and think through how you would answer them. Find someone who will practice interviewing with you. Attend teacher job fairs. In the meantime, Call our student office at 719-255-4996 to schedule an, advi an advising appointment. Apply to UCCS and enroll in the core coursework that you can take prior to teaching. Keep in touch with the SRO and with your advisor to make sure that you're meeting all of CBE's requirements and deadlines. Here's the phone number for the Student Resource Office, 719-255-4996. Best wishes as you make plans for your future, and we hope to meet you soon.